whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to all men. I want for us to look uh, mainly through, you know, through verses 1 through 8 about the change that Jesus produces Amen. on the inside of us. Amen. Like I said, it goes alongside with the song, the change. Right. He's more than enough. Yes. He produces something on the inside of us. And that's what I want to uh, speak about um, today. When we look at the book of Titus, we see Paul was writing a... A, a, a letter of encouragement, a letter of um, exhortation, a, a build-up. He was to, to a young pastor who was, getting, who was working in ministry. And it's interesting that in Crete, which I always uh, you know, thought was interesting, was that they had a lot of problems with immorality. And also in Titus, Paul, stre uh, Paul stresses while he's writing to him about the about the need for righteous living and also about the false prophets, false teachers who are coming in the midst of the church. Right. It sounds very similar to today. Right. In the US, we are very immoral. Our society is very immoral. Right, right. We have lost the very nature of what morality is. Right. We have lost the nature of what God is. And we can see this downward spiral that has happened much longer than I suppose we are willing to admit. But it's happening faster. Right. Because as, right. as the generation before me started to leave God, now they're producing a whole generation after them that does not even... A generation that does not... It's, it's not that they don't even... Uh, you know, that... Uh, it's not that they hate God... Because they want to, it's, they hate God because they were taught to hate God mm. by their fathers, mm. by their mothers. Right, right. They were taught to hate God. Mm. And the further we slip away from truth, yeah. the further we slip away right. from righteousness, right. you always, what happens is there's always evil starts to be, uh, you know, it starts to be produced in the heart of man. Yeah. And that's what Paul was trying to tell Titus here and when he wrote this epistle. He was telling him to preach sound doctrine yes, and, to, right. and, and, and to rebuke those who are preaching against truth. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get in verse, uh, I mean in chapter 3, verse 1. He says, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work. That sounds like we need it today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read the verse again. <laughs> Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities. The Bible doesn't say the rulers and authorities that you like. No, it just says rulers and authorities to obey, to be ready for every good work. I know that um, lately, well, for the past, from 2016 to 2020, I always hear Christians say, let's pray for the president, pray for leaders. Let's pray. But I notice that it's becoming less common now. Hmm. People are less saying, hey, let's pray for the president. But it's less, we, we dislike him. We disagree with him. But the Bible doesn't say if you dislike or disagree. Right, right. It still says right, to right. pray. Right. still says to obey. Regardless of how you feel about a certain individual. Hmm. To be honest, the people you like, and then the people who you don't like, you should be praying for the people you don't like more. Because you know that the people you like and that you respect are going to do things that are going to benefit the gospel. But the people that you don't like, that you know that they're out to do harm, you should be praying for them even more. Because you should ask God, say, God, change their mind. Change their focus even a little bit. Because it just takes a little bit shift for them. And then we... And, 
you know, and then a lot of things change. That's right. So anyway, that's just verse 1. It says in verse 2, to speak evil of no one. To speak evil of no one. It doesn't say people you like. It doesn't or people you dislike. It doesn't say that. It says to speak evil of no one. To be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. This is a very convicting words for us believers. Yeah. It says to speak evil of no one. There's a lot of times we want to speak evil. And not only that, there's sometimes we actually have the dirt to speak evil. <laughs> It's legitimate. It's not, you know, you dislike someone. And there is evil. You see the evil before you. The Bible says to speak evil of no one. To be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. And then in verse 3. Why? Verse 3 tells you. For we ourselves were also once foolish disobedient, yes. deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Yes. That's a mouthful. Yes. There's so many negatives in this verse. So many bad characteristics uh, um, about an individual. But that's what we were. Yeah. And Paul's reminding Titus to remind the people, saying, we were once like this. Yeah. Right. Remember when, before you got saved, how you were. Because a lot of times we forget what we were before we got saved. Mm -hmm. For some reason, we get born again. We get spirit filled. We get, God starts to live on the inside of us. And then we go serving the Lord. And then we start to forget what we used to be. And then we start beating everyone over the head, saying, oh, you're such an evil person, but you forgot what you used to be. That's why in verse 2, it tells you what to do, because in verse 3, that's how you were. You were foolish. You were disobedient. You were deceived. You were serving, us, uh, serving various lusts. You're doing, you're living your life for the weekend. You're living your life for yourself. That's what you were. Living in malice and envy. You wanted what other people had. You were just a, just a hateful individual. Now I know that for every single individual, it's going to be a little bit different the, of the extremes of it. But I do know that we all, before we got saved, I don't care if you were saved when you were young or you were saved when you got a little bit older, but you all had evil inside your hearts. And, and Paul's reminding Titus, and he's reminding us today, for what we used to be. We need to remember what we used to be sometimes. Because then, when you remember what you used to be, you know where you're going. A lot of times we forget about it, and I want us to, rem to remember, because the next verses on, you really have to lay the foundation. You have to remember mm. what God brought you from. Amen. You have Amen. to remember. Hallelujah. Because if you forget where God brought you from, then you don't know how to get to where God wants you to go. That's good. You have to remember. You have to know where Jesus brought you from, how you used to be. It doesn't matter if you were saved all your life in church. I know like for me, I was saved when I was young. But I do know that when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, when I started to have an understanding about what the cross did in my life, it started to show me really what I used to be. I was all these things. To be honest, before I went to Bible college, even before I started to... to listen to the message of the cross or, or a study in the word I didn't really understand Christianity right. because the way I was taught it was, it was different it was just like you're, you're barely making it in you know if you can just barely make it into the kingdom right. you know that's all I want just barely make it in <laughs> right. if I can just just get into heaven that's right. I want the golden ticket I want to get right into <laughs> heaven that's all 
I was striving to do. But I remember when I was in, um, it was in Brother Larson's class, and he started teaching on what Jesus did for us at salvation. Yeah. It was the first time, I'm not lying to you, it was the first time in my life I heard somebody break it down like that. Mm. And I was like, how did I not ever understand what I had when I got saved? Mm, right. Because when I understood what I got when I got sure. saved, mm. it gave me the power. Oh, I'm telling you, like the, the, right. the power of the Holy Spirit came into my heart. Oh, and it showed me like this is what Jesus did for me. Amen. And I literally felt infused with power Hallelujah. knowing what Jesus Hallelujah. did for me. Hallelujah. And that's what we are going to talk about. Mm. It says in verse 4. So we were all these things, all these negatives. But in verse 4 it says, But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward men appeared. Saying you were all this, but then the kindness and the love of God our Savior yes. appeared to us. To us, every single one of us individually that are born again. It came to us. We were evil. We were, it says, deceived. We were serving various lusts. We were just in a complete mess. But then the kindness and the love our Savior appeared towards men. It appeared into our hearts. The Holy Spirit showed up. Why did the Holy Spirit show up? And then God filled your heart. And you got born again. Verse 5 continues on. It wasn't because something you did. But it was just because he loved you. Amen. Amen. It was just because he loved you and he wanted a relationship with you. You were going against him. Right. But now he just he just reached out and he showed you kindness and love. You didn't deserve um, deserve it. You couldn't earn it. But Jesus came on in. Come on. He came on into your. He literally flooded inside of you. Yes, it says not by works of right righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. Right. It was his mercy that saved us. He just came on in. That's why that old song is, uh, that says, there's been a great change in me. Yeah. There's been a great change in me. I am so happy, Lord. I am so free. He brought me out of darkness yes. into the marvelous light. And oh, what a great change in me. There's been a great change. Yes. There's been a change that... It, if the people who used to know you back then and now they can't even recognize who you are anymore. They see you still as the same individual, the person, how you look, but they're like, you act different. You talk different. You think different. You go places different. That's because there's been a change in you. And it says this, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration. What does that mean? In John chapter 3, it talks about that. The born again experience. Right. It's when he washed us, when he cleaned us, when we became born again. That's why um, uh, Nicodemus couldn't understand the born again process. Because at first he said, I have to go back into my mother's womb. Jesus said, no, that's not what you have to do. But it, it's you, your spirit man has been born again. You are a born again person. And it says, and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's good because that renewing, we say it all, but also that renewing is what I do on a daily basis. Right. Mm. Because that word renewing means restoration. Yes. And I like this. This wasn't theirs. So let me get it here so I don't misquote it. It, it said it this way. It said, a complete change for the better. A complete change. It wasn't a renewing where you left some of the old junk. It was a renewing, a complete change. Right. We just finished a house renovation um, not too long ago. We just sold a house, like I think, on Friday. And when we came into this house, the before and after was, you know, very significant. It was yes. a, rest, a restoration of yeah. wow. a renovation, a remodel. Yes. It was, it was a change. <clears throat> I 
And when we um, when we got into this house, the the electrical we had you know electrical issues in the family room, in the dining room, and in the kitchen. Just issues. Whoever wired it didn't follow the book. They just wired it the way they wanted. You know. But we had to take the electrical and change it. The gut, like you don't see electrical right, wires, right, that's good. but you do see the light fixtures that turn on because the electrical has been wired right. And that's what Jesus did in us. He literally changed our power source. Jesus took our power source and changed it. Because our power source used to be of this world. Our power source used to be us. Our power source used to be the flesh. Everything around us, like we thought we could live our lives how we wanted. And that's what we were being motivated by. But now our power source is Him. In this house that we renovated, when we turn on the water, we can hear the water running. But when we would hit, uh, turn the knobs on the faucet, there was no water coming. So I had to call the, the, uh, the leak detection. They found a leak. It was underneath the slab. The pipe was bust. Um, busted, so we have to run a new water line through the attic to the kitchen. A brand new water line. When we got saved, that's what Jesus did for us too. He took us. We were drinking from them old wells, and He took us. And he connected us into a new well, a new supply, a new water source. So now we can drink from that Holy Spirit that is continually flooding inside our hearts and in our lives. When we renovated this house, we saw a little bit of damage, just a little bit. It wasn't, it was noticeable, but it was just a piece of sheetrock that thought okay needed to be replaced. But when we started to break up the sheetrock in the dining room and in the kitchen, there was termite damage, and still living termites too. Yeah. And they had ate through all, literally the foundation. I mean the uh, the uh, the wall structure. We had to tear all that wall out. We had to yeah. tear another wall out. We had to repair everything. And then we had to put everything back together. That's what God does to yes, us. Yes. There's yes. things in our lives that, that, that we have experienced. Things in our lives that nobody might see the damage that's done. Right. Yeah. Jesus Come comes on. in and he starts to fix it. Yeah. Those termite damages, as you all know, a lot of times they're not visible. But they start to eat on the foundation. They, uh, they start to eat on the wood inside the house. And if you continue letting them do what they're doing, it will lead to disaster in yes, the home. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can fix termite damage is by, first of all, you have to remove the termites, which we did. We called out, you know, and they charged, I think, way too much. <laughs> they came out, they sprayed, you know, you know termite, put traps up. But another thing you have to do with termite damage is you have to replace yes. that which the termite has ate. Mm, that's, yes. good. that's so good. That's, that's what we did. Yes. And that's what Jesus did, oh. does in us. Telling there's so many things in, in our lives that people don't see. Right. But I know right. that when you said yes to Jesus, when, when you start to walk with Jesus, that yes. He starts to do that on the inside. Yes. Right. He starts to oh. restore oh. you. Yes. See, the, the restoration isn't just and outside work, it's also on an inside. Yes. Right. Things that people don't see. Another thing that we fixed is we did a brand new kitchen. Because they say kitchen sell the house. But most people don't cook anymore. So I don't know why kitchen sell the house. But um, we took the kitchen and made it brand new. We opened up, like I said, we had to open up walls because of termite damage. Instead of putting those old walls, um, old walls back, we, we created a whole different floor plan. That's the same thing Jesus does to us. The Bible says He takes yes. us, He blesses us, yes. He breaks us, yes. then He can give. Yes. It talks about that in Scripture where yes. about the five loaves and two fishes. Yes. He does that with us. He takes us when we get saved and He blesses us. And then what happens? We're like, yes, we're blessed. But he has to take you and he has to now start to break you. Yes. Because when he breaks you, then he can give. Then you can be a blessing to right, others. Right. Because if you're not broken 
and you're just blessed, you start to become puffed up. Like I said, you start to, you know, you, uh, you start to forget what you used to be. Right, yeah. Yeah, right. For some, like, it always is crazy to me how fast we forget what right. Jesus has yes, done for us. I have friends, I, it, it just, it just it's, it's, I suppose it's part of the Christian living. We just forget. God saved us out of so much mess and a year later we forgot. And now we are that, self, that same self-righteousness right. individual right. that we used to hate before we got saved. Wow. Yeah. And what we have to do with the house, I mean, there's, I guess I can give you a hundred examples. Mm -hmm. but the last one I want to give you is just a paint job. We have to do brand new painting. And that paint job, God does in us, it just it makes us look better. <laughs> when you got saved, yeah. you looked better. Right. <laughs> you looked better. You started to sleep better. Uh-oh, come on now. You started not to drink what you used to drink. Amen. You started not to cons put into your body what you used to put into your body. But Jesus changed you. Yes, sir. You start, you look better <laughs> when you got saved. Glory and not only that, Praise you God. become more smarter when you get saved. There's no doubt about it. Your IQ oh, yeah. level goes oh, yeah. up when Jesus yeah. saves you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you might ask, because I heard, you know, Brother Swagger says, and I think it's very humorous. He says, but you might ask, I know some Christians who are dumb. I, do, I know Christians who are not all that. He would always would say, just think about what they what they would be before they were saved. If you think that they might not have it all together, what were they before they got saved? But I'm telling you, Jesus changes us. He changes us. He even he he enhances our appearance. Now, when you drive by the house, because we did some exterior work, we changed the windows, the siding, a whole brick wall. We have to completely tear it down and put side, um, hardy siding on it. We changed. If you drive by the house, you would kind of recognize that house because of the way it looks. But it's been so enhanced. You know, there, this house is way different. Yes. Right. It'll catch your eye now. Before, yes, right. it was kind of, you know, I had all the, you know, bushes and trees. Everything was kind of covering it. I remember when people came to check the house out, they said, we didn't even know this house existed because it was so covered. I didn't even know something was here. But now they're like, whoa, I can see the house from the road. It stands out. When Jesus comes into our lives and he changes us, yes. there's going to be a change. Yes. You still are that same person because in salvation, it's a three-step process. It's justification, sanctification, and glorification. That means... Once you're saved, you're, you're justified. You're right before God. But that doesn't mean every little thing in your life is completely gone. Because right. that's how I used to think. Once you really got saved, everything's going to be gone. You are going to live that perfect holy life before God. And that's why I think a lot of people are so miserable in their salvation. Because right. they don't understand that sanctification part. Right. That salvation is not just, a, it's, it's not just bang, I'm saved. It is, but it's... That justification is just a down payment. Mm -hmm. You started the process. Right. Then you have the sanctification, which is going to take your whole life. Yeah. Then one day you will be glorified. You yeah. will get a physically, yeah. there. Yeah. you will get a new body. Yeah. But on this life, like in this house, when you see the house, it still has the same brick color. The paint color has been changed, the soft and all that. But the brick and the exterior of the house has been improved. But I guarantee you, if you walked on the inside, say so you might recognize, oh, I, I recognize this person. But once you go on the inside, you'll say, I, I don't know which house is stepped in. Mm -hmm. Because not only is everything different in the house, but the layout of the house is completely oh, different. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it functions differently. Yeah. The way the old house was functioned, it didn't make any sense. It was too, it was just, it was too small. It was, it, it was not designed very well. But when Jesus comes into our life, He changes even the layout on the inside of us. Like I said, we have a new power source. We have a new water source. We have, our, our, our insides have been changed. And also, and now it affects even the outside of us. Because that's how people can tell something has happened. There's something different. Jesus has changed. Has changed my life. And it says this. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus is not a conservative giver. 
Jesus is liberal in giving. Yes. That's an area that he's not conservative in. He's not conservative in giving. He's liberal. That it says abundantly. It's right. more than enough. It's right. more than you need. Amen. It is it is like you asking, hey, I want to can you fill me up this cup? And whoever's filling you up the, uh, this cup, and I know it's happened to us, they, they overflow the cup on purpose. They just overflow it more than you need. You say, hey, I want this much, and they just keep pouring and pouring and pouring. And that's what Jesus does to us. He gives us more than enough. It's more than we'll ever need. It's abundantly. He doesn't skimp around. He, uh, uh, he doesn't cut corners. When he changes the inside of us. She, I, I, you know, she's not trying to save money because his budget is unlimited. It is unlimited. She doesn't have a, 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 a limit on the budget saying, I can only spend $30,000 on you. No. He said, I'm going to spend as much as it takes. Because I know some of us too in our sanctification, you might say, well, I'm just in a mess. That's, he keeps spending on you. He won't stop if... You may be like this house. We came in, we fixed it up. This house is ready to go. But whoever just moved in there, they're probably going to mess the house up. They're probably going to change things up. But Jesus doesn't just leave us and say, hey, I saved you and now I'm going to leave. No, he said, I'm going to live in this house and I'm going to keep fixing it. I'm going to keep making sure that this house is doing what it's intended to do. That's what Jesus does in us. Amen. And it says that having been justified by His grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Like I said, He didn't just stop at just saving us. He didn't stop at just cleaning us up. Now He's saying, one day I'm going to glorify you. I'm going to yeah. make you an heir of eternal life. You, when you got saved, born again, you started eternity. <clears throat> on your way to heaven. Mm -hmm. So this salvation, and that's what makes Christianity so exciting, because it just doesn't stop at church. It doesn't just right, stop right. when I'm on the job at home. It everywhere. You can have the Holy Spirit working on the inside of you, renewing you, restoring you, refreshing yes. you, changing you. I think you know. In my personal opinion, I think that the church, the um, the, the Western American church, got it. You know really messed up in this is that when God was moving we just kept it on the after a while we just started to keep it on the inside of the church we forgot to take it out right, right, so people would you right. know, barely make it to church with all the straw and they're just that once a week they were all everyone was looking for that once a week altar if I can just get to the altar just once a week everything's gonna be okay but ever since I have understood what Jesus has done, I know I can have an altar anywhere yes. I'm at. Yes. Jesus can change me anywhere. Yes. Because the time we spend here is so little in, in, in regards to our whole day, in regards to our whole week. It's so right. little. Right. This is like a, re, uh, like a pump station. You, know, you come and you refuel. That's what it should be. You come and you refuel. But it shouldn't be the station that you're coming in, your car's smoking, you're barely making it every time you get to the gas pump. That's when you know that it's time for you to upgrade on a vehicle. And that's what the Lord wants. He wants us to every time, you know, I, I've been busy doing my father's business. So when I get to church, it's just, I'm just being, I'm refueling myself. Because I've been busy doing the Lord's business. I just need a little bit of, a, 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 uh, you know, a renewal, a, a, a refreshing. But I, that, but throughout my whole day, throughout my whole week, I've been living for Him. And that's really what I want to leave with y'all today is, is us being um, continually changed by God. Having God working in us, allowing God to work in us. You might say, well, I'm not experiencing all these benefits. There's two reasons why you might not be experiencing the benefits of what Jesus did. It's, the first one is either you're not born again and you need to get saved Amen. and say, Jesus, come in. Or another thing is, is because you are not applying what he did for you. You are not receiving it. Because I know I lived my life many, many years. The truth was all here. But I wasn't living by the truth. I wasn't applying that truth in my heart. I wasn't believing right 
because I wasn't believing right, that truth was not working on the inside of me, transforming right. me, changing me, remaking the individual that I am. Because when I was younger, I used to read the word just so I can, you know, get in a few words, just you know, to preach, to speak to someone. You know, I'm studying the word just so I can, you know, share it once in a while. But now I sort of realize, no, I want the word. Not just to share it. I want the word so it can change me. Yeah. I, want to, I, want, I want the word to get on the inside of me. That's, that's why I read the word. I read it because I know it's true and it needs to change me. I think, you know, if, just open up Titus. It's only three chapters. Very short. You can probably read it in 15 minutes. You read Titus, it will convict you. In my personal opinion, I feel like if every single person who claims to be Christian read Titus, we would have half the amount who claim to be Christian would not be Christian no more. And the reason is because it's so convicting. And it would show them that, that, that God is not the God I want to make him to be. But God is the God that who he says he is. Because yes, yes. a lot of times we try to create God in our own image, right, in our right, own likeness, right, the God right. that we want. But it's not like that. It's the God that the Word says. When I was reading this, I was thinking, man... If every single person who claims to be a Christian can get a hold of this passages, because it, it, it literally will shake you to the core, telling you where your shortcoming is. And not only that, it's going to tell you where you need to go to, right. who you need to trust in, where you need to depend in. And, and that's where I want to close. And I want us to close with that same song that we were singing earlier. And I hope that it blessed you. And for you to know and understand that He's more than enough. Yes. That He is changing me. He is changing you. And for you to know what He has done in your life. Because you first have to understand where you used to be. Now you know what He has done inside of you. So now you can go where He wants you to go. And for each one of us, it's going to be different. But if you guys want to come to the altars, if you say, Hey, I'm not saved. The things that you've been talking about, I realize... I don't have any clue of what they are, then maybe it's time for you to get saved. Amen. Maybe it's time for you to come here and say, I want Jesus. If you say, you know, I see that I'm lacking in some of these aspects. You can come down here too and say, Lord, change me. Yeah. Lord, give me that first love again. Yes. Give me that understanding of you again. Give me that new revelation of truth. Give me that new revelation again, a renewal, a restoration of what you've done for me so that you can say when you leave today, I feel like I've been saved all over again because I understand the truth now. I understand what Jesus did for me. And I'm telling you, when he does a work in you, it's going to be miraculous. You won't even recognize who you are. Those times that you used to curse and get angry and instead, when, when, when those situations appear, you'll reach out and like, whoa, I didn't curse, I didn't get angry, but something on the inside of me was different. Those times that you say, hey, I would grab that bottle and I would drink, you're going to say, whoa, I'm not doing that no more because I don't want to do it anymore because if something has been changed in me. You won't even recognize yourself. Every time you will look into the mirror, you will, after a while, you'll start seeing less of you and more of Jesus. And you'll say, whoa, who is this person? This is not who I used to be. This is Jesus working on the inside of me. That's what I desire for your lives. 